in the old world of HTML4 and previously, video was kind of a mysterious black box. It was isolated from everything else on a web page, didn't interact with other stuff at all, and uh, so if you wanted any kind of interactivity, basically it had to take over the entire page, which was how we got flash-based websites. That so what you're telling us is that it should actually say Adobe on the website. Uh, something like that, yeah. <laughs> uh, so what's cool about HTML5 video and audio is that it is of the web. It is an element um, unto itself with its own API. It can interact with other stuff. But people haven't quite realized what that means. I mean, they've mostly thought, OK, it's its own thing. There's this whole kerfuffle about formats and whatever. But what does, what does that really mean? That's what I'm going to be, be showing a little bit of. Um, one thing that's not so cool about HTML5 media is that the, the APIs are very granular, so you kind of have to start from scratch when you're present, when, you know, when you want to have audio and video in a web page. And so that's where the popcorn project comes in. The idea of it is, you know, the tagline that I've heard is, is that it's like jQuery for video. It, it provides a higher level um, abstraction or, or, you know, way of interacting with stuff um, that makes it much easier to create interactive experiences using HTML media. So um, I don't trust conference Wi-Fi, so I don't assume that I will have the bandwidth to play videos. So I actually made videos of these web-based videos in order to show them at the conference. Did you want sound? Oh, yes, I do want sound. I completely forgot that part. Yeah, turn down and have her turn up the audio. One makes video. Instead of TV and a web page, popcorn-powered pages that you bring the wealth of information and story that exists on the web to your video. You can use popcorn to add commentary and annotation from Wikipedia, explore maps related to the content of a video or audio track, or dig deeper into the background of the camera. If you want to use popcorn to move a virtual camera or pull the current weather into a 3D world, we've got you covered. Using popcorn's simple JavaScript syntax, you can synchronize the time of your video or audio to any web content you wish. This code will pull up all the most recent tweets about New York. Now, I'm going to just going to... So, this is a live Twitter feed, or it was at the time that I recorded this video. Just pointing that out. Yeah. Play a map. And now, a Wikipedia article about New York. See how that works? Popcorn.js developers should know that with over 1,400 unit tests, our core library and all the plugins we ship are rock solid. If you don't write code, we're developing an app called Popcorn Maker that will make offering interactive video experiences as easy as point and click. If you're a filmmaker, a producer, or anyone else that is interested in collaborating and experimenting with us, check out our Learn Popcorn program. We run hackfests and workshops with great partners to reimagine video on the web. Popcorn is 100% open source. You can improve how it works and looks to your heart's content. So come hack with us, and let's get video and the web to play nicely. Okay. Um, so why this is cool for technical communication is that it makes these media into a two-way street where users can more interactively control what is going on with the media, and the media can control what is going on in the web page. And that has really a lot of potential. So, here's another example. This is actually online. Hi, and welcome to the first chapter of this online Django course. This course is designed for programmers interested in learning to create full-fledged web applications the right way. First of all, Django is written in Python, and you will use Python to create your Django applications. Django has a basic comments module included in So we have a table of contents into the media, and then we have content that is keyed off of the position in the media. And this is actual code, not a, just a screenshot. And it's, it's just one audio track? Yeah. And this is just indexing. It's an into, yeah. 
So, um, you know, oh my god. <laughs> and this is not a technical communication thing, but also gives you an idea of some potential here where um, you have the that, you have the text that is being shot. Said on the, in the video, I bore my spirits in thy glosses on the text. And chastise with the power of my tongue all that impedes thee from the golden round. Yeah, you know, as you advance through the video, you get yeah. the further lines, etc. Unsex me here. And fit. And then there's this one where. It brings an element of social media into the video. So people post their questions. What is the credit crisis? It's a worldwide financial fiasco involving terms you've probably heard, like subprime mortgages, collateralized debt obligations, frozen credit markets, and credit and default swaps. Who's affected? You see the questions that are relevant Everyone. How did it happen? Here's how. The credit crisis. Jump to a particular one. Um. These groups are brought together through the financial system, a bunch of banks and brokers commonly known as Wall Street. While it may not seem like it, these banks on Wall Street. You're voting on the questions and the answers, and then if you decide to post another answer, it pauses the video because obviously you don't want it just running on while you're posting your answer. Um, so, yeah. again, much more interactive and yet this, this social <coughs> element to it. So that's really cool. Um, but that's just popcorn JS, which is a library, which means that you still need a programmer to create this stuff for you. And you know, in the you know, in the traditional proprietary world, basically a lot of the time the, the technical writing department doesn't have the budget. Um, in the open source world, you know, you may have programmers on your project. But they're not really interested in helping you with, you know, documentation-related stuff that's not interesting to them. So, tools that make things easier for non-programmers to create this stuff. Um, we have Popcorn Maker, and now I'm going to tempt fate by actually going to the live. Uh, Don't do it, Janet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, you have so much to live for. <laughs> no, um, so, uh, mozillapopcorn.org is where you get to it. The popcorn maker, um, kind of explanation, disclaimer, it's it's not released, you know, released yet, even though, of course, obviously we can use it. Um, and yeah, more disclaimer. <laughs> Now we actually get into it. So there, um, it works based on, uh, or basically, there, there are templates for different kinds of um, different kinds of approaches you can use um, for you know the elements that you want to combine. Um, go into the robots one because it's fun, um, and. So the, you know, if you're familiar with video editing software, you have a, a, a track metaphor um, that's fairly familiar. I'm going to zoom out on the timeline. Um, and so there, you have your video, which you can um, uh, <laughs> I'm losing my cursor. Okay. So you can change, you know, which video you're actually displaying in here, but you know, the, the media element is kind of central to the whole thing. The lay, the template determines the layout of display elements um, and the types of content that can be displayed in a particular layout. Um, so yeah, and so we've got the you know different tracks were kind of, these are basically viewed as events um, and different types of events that we can add to this particular um, uh, template. Um, and you, you know, so you can, um, I can't read things, uh, but you can drag an event onto the template. 
timeline and then configure and position it on the timeline um, and double click it to bring up an editor where you can um, position yeah, the, the, the properties that are available depend on, on the, the content type. So you have a robot have come to its tall order on Earth. Our invasion will be centered at this location. The human beings. Stop. Okay. So <laughs> this particular one has um, actually voice generation elements in it. So, uh, <laughs> um, and, but you can you can use the. The zero B is Our invasion will be centered at this location. Okay, maybe this wasn't the best choice to pick up the demo because it's just disruptive. But uh, <laughs> you can slide that to see which elements are going to be displayed at various points in the timeline, um, or you can just play the whole thing through. Uh, you can also play it by collapsing the whole track thing, uh, and then, you know, just see what happened. Of course, now that I've kind of teased you, I have to play the whole thing. Um, <laughs> Activating the radar screen. The human being, so very weak. We robots have come to its tall order on Earth. Our invasion will be centered at this location. We have come for this human. He is strong. <laughs> the only thing that can stop them is this object. We must destroy it. You must now tell the others of our conquest. smart enough that conceptually you can combine what you saw before and what you see here and see how this has potential. Um, <laughs> Is there a robot translation of this available? Um, well, the, the speech bits, you know, are, are all elements in here, so, um, you know, you could extract these strings. Um, Into binary, yes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, um, uh, so um, you can actually uh, sign, you know, log in to this site, which uses uh, Persona, which is Mozilla's uh, universal login system. Um, is this browser ID? Yes, which has been re branded as Persona. Um, and, uh, yeah. okay, so now, you know, if I make changes to this that I really care about, I can save this project, um, I can view the various other projects that I've, um, that I've saved, I can actually publish it and share the URL, and, or if I don't want to publish it on the Mozilla Popcorn site, I can uh, get the source code for it and then put that into any other website. Um, one of the things that I kind of skip over back here is that uh, you can also make your own template, which basically in updating my presentation, this wasn't, that wasn't possible when I first did this presentation and in updating I just didn't have time to do that. But, um, Basically, you can, you can, there's a, a, 
template template uh, <laughs> that uh, that you can that you can get and then modify to your heart's content. So um, that's basically the idea of popcorn maker. Uh, just just a random question, like, can you do? Uh, say, for example, I wanted to have a robot video and I wanted to use a GeoIP to figure out where the person was watching it from and show a map of that, like with Google Maps. <laughs> Like the invasion will be centered on this location. Yeah. Could you do that kind of interactive? Um, yeah, that's, you know, basically if they have geolocation enabled in their browser. Um, or like even by their IP address. You know, if well, you can do it in JavaScript, you can do it. Um, so you can so take like some a Google things, Maps and embed that into the video. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, you can figure, you, some things you would need to, you know, kind of go outside Popcorn Maker to, to just do in code. But yes, you could figure out approximately where they are, you know, find that in Google Maps and display it, and you know, and so have something that figures out dynamically what to what Google Map to to, to display. Yeah. And you know, I mean, so a, a more traditional technical communication type of thing to do would be something like the Django uh, demo, where you know maybe somebody gave a conference talk or a screencast where you know it's an hour long nobody wants to sit through an hour long screencast actually so if you have the um, you know that table of contents concept like in the Django thing you can jump to the topics and then you know also have display the documentation page that corresponds to the topic that the person is, is talking about That was awesome. Thank you. <laughs>